So, Isaiah, you are coming from a controller dark side yes. of DJing. Unfortunately. All right? And you're trying to understand how to work turntables and improve on your scratching. So, we're going to start from the very beginning. Okay? How many years of experience do you have? Well, I bought my first controller two years ago, uh -huh. and then I really started taking things seriously about like a year ago. Like a year ago. Of, All right, yeah. cool. And do you have any kind of formal training? No. No formal training. All right, cool. So, yeah, we're going to start from the very beginning and talk about operating or manipulating the record as it's spinning on the platter, okay? So... A, before we even get into that, I just want to make sure that you understand how to work with this tone arm, okay? Because you have a controller and the controller just has a virtual deck and there's no tone arm or needle. Right. And you want to be able to touch this and work with this area of the turntable in a way that's graceful. Some people grab the tone arm and they're doofy and clumsy and they just slam the tone arm on the record. And when I see that, I could tell that the person isn't really experienced. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure that you develop a, a really cool relationship with the turntable, especially the tone arm. Okay? So when you grab a record and you're about to cue up a sound, right? You're going to hit the stop start button right. on the turntable. Hold the record. I suggest you hold the record because it just gives you more control of where you're putting the tone arm. So if the record is spinning and you grab the tone arm and drop it, the target that you're aiming for, although you might get close, you'll get closer to that target if you stop the record. Okay. You know, it, it's something about like the stillness and the, the, the fact that the record's not moving that allows you to just kind of like shake less when you grab the needle and place it on the record. So I want to see you... Hit the start stop button, grab the record, take the tone arm from the handle, move over to the record, gently place it down. Try not to slam it down. Is there a specific area that I'm aiming for? Your target in this case is the beginning groove, that thick groove that you see here. Okay. All this, right? So you could put it anywhere. Oh, uh, okay. Right, okay. anywhere. So hold the record, pick the needle up, Aim for your target, let go, get to the one. It's funny, I'm trying to like look for where the needle is. That's good. That's good. Let's just do that one more time. I noticed that you kind of put the needle horizontally, right? Yeah. And that's bad for the needle itself because it, the needle, if, 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 if it's on the record and it kind of glides across the record, it could, it could break or it could scratch the record. Mm. So you want to come down with the needle vertically, not horizontally. Drop it straight down. Right. Drop it straight down, not horizontally. Okay. Okay. So let's try that one more time. Hold the handle from the head shell, move over, come down vertically and come up vertically. Okay. Down, up, down, up. Try not to come sideways. Okay. Now you notice you notice how how when you go to grab the record you kinda come here and then you rewind. Mm -hmm. See I, I just do this. You're already there. Yeah, I'm already there. Yeah. So, so why give yourself that extra work? Why not just go straight to nine o'clock? Mm -hmm. And if you don't like where the mark is here, just flick it back. Okay. There you go. feels really nice to be honest. 
totally different experience than a controller. What makes you say that? I, just to feel it gliding under you, like the, I don't know what it's called. The platter. Yeah, to feel the platter spin, that feels like, feels nice, you know? Yeah, so, it's interesting you say that because you probably weren't aware of the tactileness of DJing mm -hmm. when you were working with your controller. Right. Now that you're on the turntables, you're realizing how physical right. it is. A controller does a lot of the work for you. You know what I mean? Right. The turntable wasn't designed for us to do what we do on it. So we have to build a certain kind of relationship with it in order for the turntable to cooperate with what we want it to do. A controller was made for you to DJ on it. So it's like it, it takes away a lot of the physicalness that a DJ needs to apply. You know what I mean? It, it, it takes away that feel. You hit a button and it's doing five, six things for you at once. Kind of disconnects you. It disconnects yeah. you. Exactly. Ironically, yeah. it disconnects you. Right. Right? The turntable forces you to develop a connection right. with it. And that connection makes all the difference when it comes to DJing out, right. believe it or not. Okay. Let's talk about the baby scratch. All right. You want to keep your hand at nine and just coax as many different rhythms as you can. It's really that simple. It's not anything complicated. Okay? So. When you released, how did you release? I it? went back. You went back. It's it's like it's like my hand is programmed to do that. So Why? I don't know. Maybe it's the controller. It's definitely I the think controller. It's the controller. It's definitely the controller. So just try that again. When you and this time, don't scratch as long. Scratch a little shorter. But when you release, follow through. Okay. okay? Sorry. That's alright. Don't don't apologize. That's what you're here to work on all those little right. bad habits. Way better. You yeah. sounded fucking good. Okay? Follow through. Mm -hmm. When you do the release, that's your way of putting an exclamation point on the phrasing. Alright? The mm -hmm. scratch phrasing. Right. Okay? Right. Okay, so you understand what you're doing with regards to the baby on the left turntable. Let's try to get some balance and practice the baby on the right. Okay? Sure. baby scratch and now that you're starting to gravitate more towards scratching on turntables you after training with me will have a better understanding of where to place your hand being conscious of whether or not 
your hand is moving back on the release or forward, you're gonna be more conscious of all that stuff and you'll fine tune that as you practice, okay? Right. Moving on from the baby scratch, now we're gonna investigate the nuances of the forward scratch. There are three types. There's a forward release, forward stab, and a forward drag, okay? So let's talk about the forward release. you're using the fader to cut the sound off on the pullback, okay? So give that a shot. control so you got to move faster and be really really in control of the fader okay? Okay. Happening is I see you moving your fingers when your whole arm should be doing the work not just your fingers so move in this manner and try to keep your fingers straight okay try not to flex them okay okay so you want to be more like with the forward release even the forward stab and the forward drag your whole arm is engaged, not just your fingers. Okay. And even with the baby, it's your whole arm from your shoulder down to your fingertips, okay? And be be more proactive about grabbing the record, pulling back to the same spot and releasing again. Switch sides. We want balance. Practice the same thing on the right turntable now. Good shit, man. How you feeling so far? The right hand, in terms of the forward scratch, feels a lot more control than the left. Because you're a righty. That makes sense. Right, because you're a righty, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good shit, man. We're inching our way. Okay. Now. We're going to talk about the forward stab. This is, to me, the hardest out of the three forward scratches. Okay, it requires a lot of endurance and you gotta achieve perfect harmony between your left and right hand, whether it's your left on a record hand and your right on a fader or your right on a record hand and your left hand manipulating the fader. There needs to be perfect harmony between both hands. 
harmony in a sense that each hand is doing something separate, but yet working together, okay? Forward stab. want it clean that's yeah. the objective is to get it that clean you don't want to hear the sound moving back right that's a messy sounding stab yeah. it's not even a stab um so let's start off slow okay just give me So your, your eighth note stabs aren't that bad. We just gotta get you to move the record back to the start point quicker. You know, and another thing is, you start to kinda like, you'll start at 12, and then you start moving it back less. So you're not, you're executing a forward stab, but like at the wrong spot. So you always wanna start and finish from the same start point, okay? <laughs> See, I just did four and each one sounded identical because I'm applying the same mechanics. I'm bringing it back to the same spot before I start to open the fader. You gotta be quick about bringing it back to the start point, okay? So let's try the eighth note stabs now. Yeah, I go further and I move quicker. I think I'm compensating because I'm not moving back. Right, me. right, right. So now you're moving like not enough. Right. Okay. So I'm not even getting the yeah, sound. Yeah, exactly. That's better. Am I still not getting the sound? moving on you another reason why the mark moves on you might be because you're heavy-handed I think so yeah because it's not moving I mean just not so the mark go from here to over here right you're probably putting too much pressure on a record yeah see it, it stays that it doesn't move yeah so although I'm moving fast and, sh and like the scratches are sounding sharp and you see me being aggressive, I'm still gentle enough to not make the mark move. You gotta be careful about that. And I okay? think that's what's been happening yeah, to me. Yeah, you're probably applying too much pressure right. on a record. sides. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Honestly, I didn't hear that much of a difference with you. Let's talk about the forward drag. The forward drag, you need to drag the record so literally when you stop the record still okay then you close the fader Fresh. 
good. All right. So we touched on the three different forward scratches, the forward stab, the forward release, and the forward drag. Now let's talk about the reverse drag, okay? Self-explanatory. What's happening? You're just pulling it back. Exactly. So if you're just pulling it back, where am I going to start from? 11, 12? Right. In other know. words, you got to go to the end of the sound right. that you're manipulating and drag it to the beginning. Right. Opposed to starting from the beginning and dragging it towards the end of the sound. Right. Okay. So, so I'm at the fresh. I'm at the SH part of the word. And I drag it back to the beginning. Okay. Right. Let's try it. touched on the baby, the forward stab, the forward drag, the forward release, the reverse drag. What's the last scratch we're going to touch on? Transformer. The transformer. Okay. Transformer is basically, you're dragging the sound that you're using forward, dragging it back, and clicking the fader off and on. Okay. We're going to use a different sound for this. We're going to use the ah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's try it. that I get more uh, it's a significant difference. right yeah it's a big difference yeah. it's because I'm doing more on the record all right you need to do more record wise with regards to moving it back and forth so that you're you're projecting more sound out of the turntable that you could click on and off so if you do this yes that's a transformer but I'm not doing much on the record, but if I get more active on the record, you get more sound, okay? Okay. So just be a little more active record hand-wise. Good. Let's switch hands. Good shit, man. You're a quick learner. Uh, the videos helped a lot. Yeah, the tutorials I sent you. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Awesome. Like, In what way? Like it helped me, um, you know, come prepared essentially, so that you know I know that my technique isn't the cleanest, but you know that's why you know I'm working with you. Um, but it helped me. You know, I try to apply it to yeah. you know everything, and it's, it's kind of yeah. like 
I don't know how to explain it. It's just a no, problem. I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I sent you the videos yeah. ahead of time because then it saves us time when we're in person. Exactly. I don't have to go over like the minutia of like moving the record back and forth and you know like where to place your fingers like I cover all that in a video right. and we could just hit the ground running right. when you get here beast you're gonna be a beast now that we've covered the six fundamental scratches how do we apply them exactly how do we apply them like we understand the technique that revolves around each scratch the movements the kind of pressure you need to put on the record how to hold the fader but knowing is not enough you got to be able to apply right this is what you're gonna do when you practice at home. I'd say 95% of DJs that practice their scratches, download a looper, play it on one side, and then scratch ah for 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes even longer, right? They'll get on their dominant hand, in my case, it'd be the left turntable and just scratch off ah, forever and ever and ever and ever, right? And fail to train the weak hand or the weak side, right? The weak hand on the fader. Right. You're not gonna be one of those guys. I want you to always strive for being balanced, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scratch this break beat the way the pioneers of these techniques did back in the days, all right? I'm talking Grandmaster Flash, Grand Wizard Theodore, Grand Mixer DST, Jazzy J, the pioneers of this art, the guys that invented the scratches that we do today, didn't scratch ah over a looper. Right. They would work with actual music, okay? Here's an example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Right? Yep. What scratch was that? A baby into a forward, uh, forward step. Right. So you see how now I'm combining the fundamental scratches? Right. That's all it is. It's combining them and applying the moves in a way that is personal to you. Okay? On both sides, not just one. Right. And this break is gonna end. So you have but so much time to solo before you gotta drop the song and then swap to the opposite turntable. So let's just listen to the break itself and see how long it lasts. So you're soloing here, soloing, soloing. Now you're kinda getting ready to wind down your last few bits of scratches, right. here's the cue. Bam. When you hear ba da da ba da da mm, switch drop, over. switch over, yeah. okay?
Yes. Oh man, I wish you would have kept that. Going. I know. I really yeah. tried, but I felt yeah. myself yeah. fail, yeah. so yeah. I just yeah. failed. Yeah. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. When you're scratching, you got to be able to figure out a sequence of sounds that you want to coax out. And as you're scratching on the spot, you want to kind of develop some sort of order to your scratches. Yeah. So if you if you listen to me, I'll give you like an intro then I'll give you a body, and then I'll give you an ending. Or there are times where I'll give you like a chorus, a verse, I'll go back to that same chorus, then I'll give you a new verse, and then I'll end. So think in terms of like segments. I think what I have to work on is knowing how or just being used to transitioning between different kinds yes. of scratches. It's like connecting Legos, that's yes. what I think. Yes. You know, I'm thinking like I'll do one scratch, but I won't. I guess I won't know how to transition right. into another. Right. Because you don't have the practice. It's not seen. Right, right, I have right, to right. work on that. Right, That's right, what I think. Right, right, exactly. But maybe start off with basic scratches. <laughs> Nah, dude, that was dope still. It's not gonna always be perfect. I just want to know that the intent to, to be smooth, to sound funky, to be expressive is there. And that last run was really good. Even with the little mistakes, I just felt like your personality came out of your scratches more, opposed to you just regurgitating scratches I felt that was you actually expressing the scratches. With practice, dude, I'm telling you, man, you're gonna be a monster. Thank you. I, yeah, I look forward, that's why I'm here, you know? Forward. I felt like, you know, cause I, again, I watch a lot of your videos, so I feel like I, I resonated with what you were teaching and I know you're like, you're a purist about it. I'm like, hey, if I'm gonna do this, like, I, I really wanna do this the right way, so. Right on. Yeah. Good shit, Isaiah. Hey, I really Good shit, appreciate man. it. Right on, man, right on. You're on your way, man. You're on your way. <laughs>